Hello. This is a video about using autofocus for macro photography. By macro I mean scenes that are an inch or so wide or less. I think of scenes that are greater than an inch or so as being close-ups and here I'm going to talk about smaller scenes, macros. Now I spend time on the macro and close-up forums on a couple of sites and I quite often see comments to the effect of you can't use autofocus for macro photography. I find this interesting because I use autofocus almost all the time for my close-ups and macros. For example, all the images that are showing at the moment were captured using autofocus. And this includes subjects that are moving around quite fast, like this one was. And subjects that are small. This one, for example, was a couple of millimetres long and it was actually in motion when the photo was taken using autofocus. So I thought it would be interesting to try autofocus with several combinations of kit, a couple of which I normally use and the rest of which I don't. The idea being to see which combinations work, for me at least, and which ones don't. I'm going to start with the camera that I have used the most in the past year when photographing invertebrates, insects, spiders and so on. And that is an FZ330 bridge camera used with close-up lenses like the Raynox 150 and Raynox 250. I normally use flash for this sort of photography but in order to simplify making this video so I don't have to keep moving the flash around from one camera to another I'm using natural light for this exercise. So here we have the Raynox 150 on the FZ330. We'll start with a relatively low magnification. I'm using a small single focus area in the middle of the screen and when I half press the shutter button and get focus confirmation we'll hear a very brief double beep and may see the square in the middle go green. So now we'll increase the magnification. And now go to maximum magnification. Now we'll focus on the background to get an idea of the size of the scene we're dealing with, about 13 millimeters wide. Now we'll look at the FZ330 with a much more powerful close-up lens on it, the Raynox MSN202. Now, as the magnification goes up, things start to get difficult. What I'm doing here is to increase the size of the focus area that helps 
when the magnification is very high like this. And now I try to focus on the ruler so that we can see what size of scene we've been dealing with. And the scene is about three millimeters wide. Given how much problem I have gaining focus, you might think that there's no point using autofocus for scenes this small if the focusing is going to be that difficult. A couple of things to bear in mind. I was holding the camera at an extremely awkward angle so that uh, the camera behind could see the LCD screen. Uh, so my hands were sitting very unnaturally on the camera. The table it was on was wobbling and I had the um, the camera on top of a little pile of uh, slate coasters uh, and it was wobbling on top of the pile as well which is one of the reasons everything was moving around so much on the LCD. What I found helps when using these very high magnifications which I very rarely do um, is to use a tripod. Now it's not a hands-off use a remote release type use of tripod that's just impractical I think but by having the camera on the tripod it damps the vibration down. There's still some movement induced you know because your hands are shaking a bit um, but it damps them down and I found that framing the image and uh, gaining focus is easier with a tripod and as, as you ease off the magnification and usually I'm, I'm not going um, to scene widths less than six mil something like that and at that point the autofocus is is working quite nicely next we'll look at the other kit combination that i've been using quite a lot this year that's a Panasonic G80 Micro Four Thirds camera with a 45 to 175 lens and Raynox 150 and 250 on that used singly and in combination. So for example a 150 with a 250 on it as well to give a bit of extra magnification. In this case we'll look at the Raynox 250. One thing to notice here is that, unlike with all the other kit combinations, when I change the magnification, I don't move the camera. And that's because the 45 to 175 lens on which the 250 is mounted doesn't extend and contract as you change the focal length. And this, in fact, makes it very useful for higher magnification work because it helps with finding the subject because you can zoom out, find the subject, center on it and zoom back in. Otherwise at high magnifications it can be very difficult indeed to find the subject. Focus on the eye and recompose. Maximum magnification. Scene width around 12 millimeters. This time, in order to get a similarly small scene width as we got with the FZ330, we'll use an even more powerful close-up lens, this time the Raynox MSN 505.
that went better and easier than with the FZ330 and tends to confirm a feeling I've had for some time that the uh, G5 and G80 are actually better at the very small scenes than the FZ330. Although it too had a bit of a problem with focusing on the ruler. Anyway, it's uh, about 3mm scene width uh, as we had with the FZ330. Now let's look at some kit combinations that I have tried in the past but I didn't really get on so well with. We'll start with a Panasonic G3 with a 12 to 60 lens and 26 millimeters of extension tube. First at 60 millimeters, then around 40 millimeters. Now around 30 millimeters, and trying 25 millimeters. Just managed it. Can't get any closer now. Scene width around 22 millimeters, I think. Next up, a Panasonic G5 with Olympus 60mm macro. trying to get it to one to one that was the closest I could get with autofocus which was a scene width of about 24 millimeters now I've added 26 millimeters of extension tube to the 60 mil macro now trying to get to maximum magnification again. This would be marked as one to one on the lens but of course with the extension tubes would be greater than one to one. I now want to focus on the ruler so that we can get an idea of the scene width. But the fly seems to get much smaller when I focus on the background which makes me wonder exactly how reliable these um, estimates of scene widths are with the ruler being um, a little way away from the front of the subject which is where I've been focusing. So I think don't take them too seriously um, but I think they do give a general impression of the sort of sizes that we're dealing with here. Next a DSLR, the Canon 70D First we'll see it with a Raynox 150 close-up lens mounted on a 55 to 250 STM tele-zoom lens. I have to say that there are three versions of the 55 to 250 and I had one of the earlier versions and my close-up lenses didn't work at all well on them. In fact the 150 worked with difficulty and the 250 hardly worked at all. It's only with the STM version that they work 
pretty well. One thing to notice though is that the focus box is a lot larger than on the Panasonic cameras and that is the smallest that it will go on the 70D. That means that you can't get the same precision in placing the centre of focus as you can with the Panasonics. Next, the 70D with an 18 to 55 kit lens and 68 mil of extension tubes. And finally, the 70D with a Sigma 105 macro. Now a final adjustment to get it as close to one to one as I can. So that completes this little experiment with trying to use autofocus with various pieces of kit, albeit with a simple static target. It's a technique that I find useful for my invertebrate photography with static and moving targets, and as we've seen it works more or less depending on what equipment you use and also on the magnification. As to where it doesn't work, I've already mentioned the non-STM versions of the Canon 55-250 to telezoom lens which I couldn't get to work with uh, close-up lenses very well. Also, I tried the Sigma 105 with the same 68mm of extension tubes that I used uh, with the uh, 1855 kit lens. And with the Sigma, it really didn't work at all. It might work with uh, a lesser length of extension tube. I don't know, I didn't try that. The other thing that I've never been able to get working. Um, is phase detect focusing when using the optical viewfinder with the 70D. It works okay with the live view, which I think also uses a form of phase detect focusing, the uh, Canon's dual pixel focusing, but uh, I, I can't get it to work with the focusing that you use through the optical viewfinder. So, to wrap this up, I think it's a case of if you've tried it and you know it doesn't work for you, that's fair enough. 
But if you haven't, you might want to try it. And who knows, you might be pleasantly surprised and have another tool in your photographic kit bag. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Goodbye.